Welcome to another quick tutorial. Um, we did a tutorial showing you how to do like a mouth lip sync with uh, the sound effector. I um, wanted to just show you some other cool things that you can do. Um, you might have seen a tutorial like this, but just wanted to show you some variations on um, how to use the sound effector to create some cool particles and interactions and, and, and even things that you could pull out frames from to make some you know really cool images. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is start with a cloner object and I'm just going to drop in for now just like a basic sphere and I'm going to make this an icosahedron and drop it into my cloner. By default it's uh, making this vertical linear count of uh, spheres I want to get rid of that by getting rid of the height on the Y and I'm gonna make this give this height uh, something on the x-axis and something like that I'm gonna scale down my sphere a little bit and I'm actually going to switch over to the radial view here <coughs> um, I'm gonna make my radius actually a lot bigger and I'm going to make a lot more count in there. A lot higher count, I should say. And just kind of make this so it looks almost like a pearl necklace here. Just enough so that, you know, somewhere around 44 to 50. They're basically touching, but they're abutting right up next to one another. Um, and then the next thing we need, make sure the cloner is selected. And we're going to create a sound effector. And I'm going to pull in this beat that... Um, that I like and I'm gonna make sure that it's working it should already be giving me a little vibration now the reason why it's so quiet is because it's playing this long intro to the song you can change the offset by going into the negative of frames and I want to go all the way to where I know the beat kicks in so around 273 and maybe even further I don't want that intro at all So there we go. So you see we got a little bit of movement here. Not a ton. Um, so let's start playing with some parameters here. Uh, the first is what part of the song is this reacting to? Well, right now it's reacting to this entire graph. So if I can find a place where the beat hits. Right now it's reacting to everything, including this blank space. So I want to get rid of that. How do I do that? Well, we're going to use a filter. And as soon as I click filter, you'll notice there's a little sliver right there um, that now that's what's reacting to. And it's somewhere in the uh, beat range there, the, the lower, the bass range. I'm going to change my frequency. I'm going to drag that out closer to where all the snares happen and the higher frequency stuff happens. And then I'm going to increase my bandwidth to pick up on those. So that's kind of more like... I don't know, the look and feel of the song. If you were just kind of like tapping your feet, that's sort of what you'd be picking up more of, I think, is that range of this track. So I'm going to leave it there for now. But it's still not cool. We still, still don't really have a lot going on. Um, so in the parameters, what we're, what we're seeing is basically the position is changing by a maximum of 1.6 feet forward a little bit. It's not moving left or right it's not moving towards us and away from us you know if we wanted to have it throbbing towards us we could do this you know uh, but we don't really want that effect either it's not that cool what we want is to go into the scale um, and we're gonna just kinda mess with this we'll make it uniform and we'll just put like 10 here and now watch now we got a pretty big thing going on here um, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller and another cool thing we can add here is we're gonna add some color to this so down here in your frequencies color I can change these two parameters to I'm just gonna randomly pick a green and a purple I don't know 
how that how those colors work together, but they don't really work together very well. But right away, not doing anything because we got to go to parameter and we got to turn the color mode on. And what we're seeing now is just green, which means somewhere down in here is probably where. Yeah, so I'm gonna drag these around until I'm getting a blend of both purple and green, somewhere in that range, I think. And it's still pure green. There we go. Cool. So we got a little bit of action going on there. Maybe I'll increase my bandwidth to get more variety. And then we're gonna add a, a little bit of a delay just to kind of smooth out the um, stopping and starting, the popping of these particles. You'll notice the difference. That's like really, really dramatic. And this just kind of smooths it out a little bit. Let's make our spheres a little smaller. So still not doing a whole lot, right? It's just kind of, I mean, yeah, it's reacting to the music. Yeah, it's changing colors a little bit. But um, the big thing we got to do here is on the spheres, we're going to add a rigid body. And we need to make sure these kind of stay in the relative position that they're in so they don't just fly away. Now we're going to see some really interesting interaction. Now that is starting to look kind of cool. So that's starting to actually look like something like like we want. Um, you know, we could change the position even lower, and now you're gonna see these things sort of float around, gather position, change. And because they're spheres, you can't really see the rotation going on. Uh, we could go in here and grab a totally different um, particle and just put that uh, tag on that. And now we're getting some rotation and different cool stuff going on. So that's pretty cool. Um, my particles though, they don't look very, the colors aren't very good. So one thing you need to do is create a new material. You can't affect the color because that's coming from the sound effector. But what you can do is you can add a, um, under MoGraph, you can add a color shader. And this is where, this is how we can add our Fresnel. And if you're using anything over R16, how to use that is you need to go into the legacy reflection. And under layer mask, we can add now a Fresnel. And that's just going to give these particles a much, a much better look. Oops, sorry, under cloner. Actually, I don't think it matters which one. There. Now we got some reflection and some edges going on, um, and it just looks a whole lot better. So if, when we start adding things like um, a background sky with, let's just create a totally white, non-reflective material to kind of make this big, infinite sky. Um, when we get that in there and hit and just do a render, now we can start to get some really interesting looking um, particles as they freeze up. So, you know, we can play around with a lot of different looks. You know, we can add in, um, for this, we can add in, use you know, use cones instead of platonics. Let's see what that does. You know, nothing that crazy, but still a, a cool different look. If we take a look at it, that's pretty rad. Um, and then we can add some more dynamics to this. So let's create another cloner and let's add in a sphere that we put in the cloner. Actually, I'm just going to copy this one. And in this cloner, I'm just going to do something linear. 
okay? That's got my X step, and I'm gonna create a ton of particles. And actually, instead of cones, I'm gonna use spheres for this one. So let's get that out of there. Oops, I need that tag. And then, I don't know why that's not linear. Oh, there we go. And I'm going to kind of center this up. Make my spheres a lot smaller. And a lot closer together. Because I want them to be... There we go. Why is that... So now I'm going to start get kind, of some, kind of getting some interaction here. Um, and I'm going to just mess with the, their parameters a little bit. So I'm going to make the positions much lower and the rotation. So it's going to move around even more. Maybe if I go to one, watch. These things kind of drift and cascade around. And I'm just going to give them their own unique color here. So new material, color. Let's go with a red, something bright like that. Same deal under reflectance, getting go to the legacy reflection, and then add in a Fresnel, and then drop it right on top of my spheres. So you see when I get that bounce, what kind of a look I'm getting. I'm getting kind of a cool, a pretty cool look in there now. Um, I can turn my Fresnel down a little bit because right now it's kind of overpowering. You'll notice I'm getting so much white on the edges. And I don't want that much. I want um, I want a little bit. I want them to look kind of like little paintballs or marbles, but I don't want them to be so reflective. So somewhere around like 30 40% is a good place to, to go with that. So that looks a lot better. My red I could actually turn up a little bit. Um, Oh yeah, there we go. Cool. <coughs> so yeah, this gives you an idea of how to use the sound effector to um, animate and create some different particle interactions. Um, you have a lot of different parameters to parameters to play around with, um, in any and and you can create as many cloners as you want. Um, um, just you know. Go crazy. I mean, have, have fun with it. And uh, you can create more sound effectors too. So, you know, right now I've got only one sound effector for both. But, you know, we could create a different sound effector and it could have totally different parameters, right? This could be not uniform scale. Um, but this could be, you know, massive in the Y direction. So it just jumps up and down. And then for this cloner, it's under its effectors. I'm gonna just replace it with sound one and I'm gonna get totally different particle stuff going on. So see these are just jumping up and down basically, right? They're only interacting when something hits and it pops up, pops them up and kind of keeps them in rotation. Um, and you notice they're not getting the same explosion, but you know you can almost create this large cloud of of, of particles around it. So um, anyway, it gives you a, a point of reference to start with. I hope it was um, somewhat useful for you. And uh, hit subscribe, keep watching, and I uh, hope to teach you more with, uh, with more tutorials in the future.